Newly released documents confirm long-held suspicions that police stingray surveillance technologies capable of recording phone numbers from a mobile phone's incoming and outgoing calls, as well as intercepting the content of the voice and text messages, while the federal government has been fighting hard for years to hide the details about stingray. But the American Civil Liberties Union of Northern California has obtained those documents after a two-year court battle to reveal some of those details. So now we are being joined by Linda Lai. She's a senior staff attorney at the ACLU in Northern California to discuss the implications of Stingray technology on our privacy rights. Linda, thanks so much for being with us today. So you write that that the way these technologies are being used, quote, do not justify bypassing the ordinary legal processes that were designed to balance the government's need to investigate crimes with the public's right to a government that abides by the law. Can you talk a little bit about why the ACLU got involved in challenging uh, law enforcement use of Stingray? Absolutely, thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, stingrays are a poignant illustration of how the law needs to keep up with new technology. The government is using intrusive new forms of technology to invade our privacy, but it's shrouding its practices in secrecy, and stingrays are a very poignant illustration of that. We shouldn't have to surrender our privacy rights merely by using the modern conveniences, uh, daily conveniences of modern life like a cell phone. Um, the public, courts, and criminal defendants have have a right to know when the government is using intrusive form, new forms of technology. It raises cutting edge legal questions like what kind of court authorization um, does the government need to get before it uses this technology. But the government, by shrouding its practices in secrecy, is avoiding the light of public scrutiny and the um, scrutiny of the courts. Well, do you think that these uh, tools and powers are kind of so broad and overreaching and expansive that they're infringing on, on our general rights to privacy? And, and do we need to legislate against it? Absolutely. Stingrays, again, I, um, are a really interesting case study. They're obviously one of many new forms of invasive technology, but again, they underscore and illustrate the importance of transparency. It is essential that the public have some basic information about what these new forms of technology are because they implicate very cutting edge legal questions. Something like a stingray operates by being a fake cell tower. And in so doing, it convinces, it tricks cell phones into communicating with the stingray instead of the real um, Verizon or Sprint cell tower. The reason why that's significant is because stingrays scoop up information not only from the target of the government's investigation, but also innocent third parties as to whom the government has no probable cause or reasonable suspicion whatsoever. So that means that innocent bystanders are having their information rights compromised um, at the risk of going into a little um, context, judicial, some of the history behind the constitutional provisions at issue is really important. The Fourth Amendment of the Constitution requires the government to get a warrant before it searches someone's home or seizes someone's property. And the reason why we have that is because before we adopted that provision, the British would engage in what are called general searches, searching anywhere, anywhere uh, they pleased in order to look for violations of British customs laws. Well, unfortunately, stingrays and many other forms of technology, but stingrays are one example, engage in the electronic equivalent of a general search. They search mm -hmm. not only the target of an investigation, but also innocent third parties. And that kind of privacy intrusion is not what the framers contemplated. It's very essential for uh, courts, the public, and the legislatures, our elected leaders, to have an understanding of just what kind of intrusive surveillance the government is using. Well, just to, just to play a little on, on uh, play devil's advocate and play on the other side here, um, what would you say is a more responsible approach to surveillance and security that, that wouldn't weaken our constitutional rights to privacy? What else can the police do um, to garner the same types of information that the stingray can provide to them? 
that's an excellent question. Um, and fortunately, the framers of our Constitution came up with the answer a long time ago. It's not something that the ACLU or privacy advocates are just making up. It's called the Fourth Amendment's warrant requirement. When the government has good reason to believe, um, in, in the legal term is probable cause, to believe that searching something will produce evidence of a crime, it can go to court and ask for permission. The court serves as an important independent um, arbiter to determine if the investigators really have met probable cause that warrants invading privacy. So the warrant requirement is a time-tested method for balancing the government's legitimate need to do investigation in the name of public safety and uh, investigating crimes with the public's equally legitimate need um, uh, and right to privacy. Now, just to summarize, it sounds like you're saying if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? <laughs> That's a wonderful way of putting it. Much more succinct. Thank you. Thank you so much for your expertise. That was Linda Lai, Senior Staff Attorney at the ACLU of Northern California. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me.